on the committee. I'll hear from David. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Mr Chair, I just want to follow on when where Chris Hipkins just left off and, uh, and particularly comment on the, on, the, on the contribution by the Minister because the Minister, when he spoke before, I expected and anticipated to hear a, a solid reasoning of why this amalgamation was going to actually make a real difference. And, and, that, and that didn't happen. Um, and I, what I did hear was he wasn't able to provide any, any assurance to us that uh, attending or visiting uh, fire services and fire stations around the country would, would be able to happen freely. But he certainly did not give, he did not give a, 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 a good interpretation of why this piece of legislation is actually important. Why are we sitting here in, in, under urgency on a Saturday to listen to this? And while we, we've talked about whether this will be a topic of conversation around barbecues over the next few weeks, uh, um, I, I think it actually will be. I think it will be used as an example of what, of what this government proposes to do, in fact, what it's actually doing. Now, I want to get back to one of the things that he did raise, which is the issue of new technology. And when we were listening in the Science uh, um, Education Select Committee, this is the issue that came up over and over again, over and over again, vindicating why this uh, legislation had to go through. It is a IT driven, an IT driven uh, rationale. It is simply, there is no other rationale that we could actually come to, to understand why on earth this is being done, except for the fact that there might be some sort of, sort of ideological reason uh, why this might happen, that you can pick on a librarian and they're unlikely to fight back. Uh, you, can, you can bully a librarian and they're not, li they're not likely to march on parliament. Um, the independence, as uh, Chris Hipkins was just talking about before he, before he sat down, is, is indeed compromised by this legislation. It could not, not be compromised. And I want to look at, the, um, at, at the, the, the part of the bill about independence and reporting. The bill changes the status of the National Librarian from Chief Executive to Employee. From Chief Executive to Employee. And there's a feeling that somehow, by making this person, the head of the National Library, a third tier uh, employee of the Department of Internal Affairs, a department which, as we have he heard, has massive amounts of other responsibilities, a grab bag for just about everything in government that doesn't fit into a particular ministry, that somehow that the, this, employee, this, this employee will have exactly the same ability to influence and to maintain the independence of the National Library as is what happened before. It's simply not the case. And, and looking at the number of submitters that came before us, there were 30, 31 submitters. 100% of those submissions, and Colin King knows this for a fact because he was sitting there and listening as well, nodding, he, he, he's nodding his head that 30, all of them, 100% of those submitters that came before us opposed this shift, this change. And they basically centred their objections around the fact, as I say, that the chief executive has been relegated to, that, to an employee to say that it will be diluted, that that role will be diluted by organisational layers, that the National Librarian will lose their right to the minister, that the National Librarian's influence and independence will be adversely affected. Now, we've had uh, Mr Nathan Guy put before us the Crown Law uh, report, which we hadn't seen before, along with a bottle of uh, Whiteout, to, to, talk, to talk, talk, about, talk about a lack of ability and, and read selectively from that Law Commission report. But look, the, the, the bottom line is, is uh, Mr Chair, is the bottom line here is if you submerge a, at the head of a department like this, at the third level of a, of, a, uh, of, of a hierarchy, and then expect them to operate in the same independence as they did before, you're dreaming. You're completely no. dreaming. There is no way that bureaucracies operate there. like that. Anybody that's been in a bureaucracy knows that. That, that person, the, the, national li the chief uh, librarian, the national librarian, <laughs> will of course have to be reporting up the, chain of, up the chain of command. Of course they won't have the same ability to, uh, to exercise independence as they did before. Of course they won't be able to, to, uh, 
to, main, to uh, assure people in New Zealand, the New Zealanders, that that's the case. Come, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Chris Ockenvold. I move that the question.